Hi guys. Um, so uh, yeah, as Barbara said, we've been a member of the Hardware Club for for a while now. Um, I think we were number 26 or something. Um, and uh, we're uh, an alumni of, uh, of of EF. So I have to say thanks to Matt, Alice, Jade, and all the other EFers that, that are here. Um, and uh, and and we we launched on Indiegogo. Um, so there's sort of like a lot of people here that we know all in one room for the first time. <laughs> Um, so what, what are we? We're um, well now. We're a, a massively engaging hardware and software uh, education brand, and um, what what we try and do is uh, is basically add a massive layer of engagement to um, to STEM subjects, specifically computing in in the school and in the household. Um, but but how did we uh, start? Well, we we launched on on Indiegogo and. Um, a couple of the VCs and people that have been talking uh, have talked about um, how it's easier to make hardware these days, and that and that's that that's true. Um, the only reason we were able to make PyTop is is um, because we could 3D print the case um, and we could develop all of the uh, all of the circuit boards actually using free software called Design Spark. Um, it, it, it's uh, it's great if you if you want to make circuit boards and you want a free and unlimited program. Um, Use Design Spark. Um, so what 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 Anastasia talked about hardware solving a problem, and that's that's something that we really wanted to solve, um, or we wanted to sort of use hardware to solve a problem. And that that the problem is is that people in 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 schools and parents and individuals essentially think that 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 teaching any type of IT in schools is going to magically result in um, in more engineers in the world, and and people are just going to continue uh, doing IT. Um, when when what we're using right now are things like PDFs and and like really basic online guides, um, and it's boring. Um, so kids aren't inspired. And and how do you actually inspire kids in schools? Um, well, it's experts. Uh, experts inspire um, the the next generation. Um, and and the problem is is that you can't have an expert in every single school. You can't have an expert in every single household. And and so what you need to do is um, Provide uh, a, a essentially that expertise, and and why does expertise in the classroom and at home result in inspired students? Well, it's because the experts are out there looking at the trends. They're really, really interested in what they're doing, and they apply all the newest trends, all the newest uh, interesting things in their in their field to their subject. And so it means that the the students, the kids, um, they're actually learning things that are really cutting edge and interesting. Um, but you can't expect every school to have an expert. Um, and so that's where, in terms of computing and STEM subjects, that's where PyTop comes in. Um, we take the, the latest trends in technology and, and we apply them uh, in a way that, that create extremely clear pathways uh, 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 for learning. So if you want to learn how to make circuit boards, how to 3D print, and how to code hardware, then, then PyTop is, is, is essentially the product for you. Um, but where, how did we come to this decision? Well, we talked to loads of people. Um, we went to t dozens of schools, talked to literally thousands of people, um, hundreds of educators, and asked them, well, what's the problem with, with computing in schools, essentially? Um, and, uh, and, 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 and the problem is that there, there wasn't enough experts, and it was difficult to apply the newest technology in schools. Um, it is just a difficult thing to do. Uh, so we teach um, primarily, we teach hardware, we teach software, and we teach uh, people how to 3D print. Um, so what we do is we create a, a layer of fun engagement for schools, for parents, um, and for individuals in order to learn how to um, create hardware and how to code, um, essentially in a, in a different way. And I'm going through this quickly so we can Move on, um, but but how how did we start? Um, well, we, d you know, I, I think the the smallest amount someone said here was like oh fifty thousand dollars. You know, we started with six thousand um, dollars, and that was it because uh, that's all we had. Um, so the we we literally built the desk that we built our three D printer on that we printed the first PyTop prototype with. Um, we prototyped all our circuit boards uh, uh, using free software. And it was essentially a completely um, open source uh, and and really grassroots um, thing that we were doing, and uh, and and we we walked around with the 
the the first prototype, um, which was this really big, Matt and Alice will remember, um, really big, clunky 3D printed laptop. Uh, but these these new techniques, honestly, 3D printing, if you're making hardware, get a 3D printer. They are fantastic um, and great, great prototyping tools. Um, we built everything in my living room, um, filmed the entire Indiegogo video in my living room. Um, we built a 3.5 meter camera dolly um, to take panoramic shots of our product because that's what's expected. You got to make a good video on Indiegogo, and so, but we couldn't afford to buy a big, uh, amazing sort of photography set. Um, so we built one out of Raspberry Pi um, because that's what we were building with anyway. Uh, then, then, like Anastasia said, you have to scale. Um, so we. Uh, Part of a big part of that is is networking and talking to people and finding out how this stuff is done. Um, it's a big difference between making something in your living room um, and then making you know thousands of that uh, thing. So we went to Shenzhen. Um, we actually uh, got introduced to RepRap Pro, um, one of the sort of original uh, open source three D printers, and they they helped us out a lot um, getting to uh, Shenzhen, sourcing all the components. Uh, and uh, and and doing things like assembly point, um, like yeah, having an assembly point, uh, having a logistics partner, and actually being able to 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 ship our product out. Um, so what have, what what have we what have we made? Well, this is what's shipping in a month and a half. Um, I'm going to have the first pie top. Sadly, the first commercial pie top, literally uh, next Monday. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, but it's uh, it, it's a build-it-yourself Raspberry Pi-based laptop. That's the hardware that we make right now. It's got a 13.3-inch screen. It's got 10 hours plus battery life. Um, and, and in fact, if you use it like a regular, that that's if you use it constantly. If you use it like a regular laptop, on and off, um, you're, you're looking at 15 hours plus. Uh, and, and it's completely modular, so it turns any microcomputer into a laptop. Um, and that that's. That's pretty cool, uh, I think, for a $299 price point, um, because w w essentially it's uh, it, it, it's relative uh, in terms of screen size. It's just as uh, good as any Chromebook in terms of battery length, uh, battery life. Um, it's uh, it, it's three times longer than most of the Chromebooks out there at, at similar price points, um, and we've all we made our own battery, um, 500 cycles. Uh, it only degrades to 84%, so you're looking at a, a really long use case. But the coolest thing about this laptop is any microcomputer in the future, buy it, put it in the laptop, and it'll work. So it's an extremely long life device. Um, it also lets you connect to a whole range of, uh, of things. And then the, uh, the, the, the last bit I'm going to get onto here is, um, so Anastasia was talking about how um, hardware is a really great route to make some interesting software. And so the other half of what we do is, is, is software. Um, it's a, essentially a massive multiplayer online game that interacts with hardware in a way that hasn't been done before. So we right now are focusing on teaching software, hardware, and design. Uh, we aim at the just pre-GCSE pre to through, through to GCSE level. Um, it's our goal that you, you should be able to play our game for six months and pass your GCSE computing. Um, and we do a lot of interesting stuff on the back end to, to make this easy uh, to apply to classrooms. Um, here's some screenshots of the game that we're about to actually release um, in, the next, uh, in the next five days. We're, we're going to have a friends and family version of this. But essentially, Seed Universe, um, our game, is uh, it, it's, a, it's a fantasy world based in computing reality. And what, what, what this does is allow a user to um, learn how to make circuits, learn how to code hardware, so learn how to code robo robots, um, and essentially get into hardware completely for free. So the game is totally free. Um, everything that you learn in the game, so for example, you might go into a cave and need to make an LED circuit. So you make an LED circuit, right? And it turns your torch on in the game. Um, eventually, we're going to have things in real life where you make the LED circuit in real life and your torch turns on in the game. Um, that's a basic example, but what this allows our users to do is try out hardware for free, learn for free, um, but then if you do want to build the robot that you've built in this game, um, you can order that through us as well. So there, there's, there's the, the, there's the add-on boards, 
um, and extra functionality that you can add uh, that you can build. Um, the same the same with PyTop. Um, it's a it's modular, so you can add extra functionality into it. Um, for example, a weather station, a really cool speaker set, whatever you want. Um, so yeah, we we we've tested um, tested out PyTop uh, and and our and our learning environment with literally probably thousands of students now, um, and, uh, and and this is what um, has what s sort of guided us um, in terms of where we should go, uh, and I think that's if I could give any any advice to any uh, like new hardware founders is go and talk to as many people as possible and see see what people actually want, um, and then and then. Try and build that if it, 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 it if you're interested in it, um, because yeah, you are going to be doing this for a really long time. Um, what what are we what are we doing in the future? Well, our our main areas Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and 3D printing. Um, there, the interest I I is growing immensely over time. Um, best way I can describe that is Raspberry Pi. They've sold five million units when they released the Raspberry Pi. Two, um, they sold 250,000 units in just one day. So the the market is growing massively, and we're essentially here to um, to make uh, to make things like this, um, so little credit card sized computers, into something that anybody can use, super easy to use, um, and uh, and it, and it, it, you know fully mobile type stuff. But essentially, um, yeah, stuff like this is what we're interested in, and stuff like this is what we want to uh, teach people how to use.